Welcome back to Private Pilot Ground School. This video is about airspace weather minimums. In the last few videos we talked about airspaces, where they're located, what their dimensions are. Here we tackle weather minimums and weather requirements in order for you to be able to operate VFR in each one of those airspaces. If you would like to find the weather minimums for yourself, they're located in the FAR Part 91.155. You'll find a table that looks just like this and it's something that you absolutely have to have memorized and know before you go flying in any sort of airspace. Let's get a few things cleared up before we start just so I don't lose some of you during this video. VFR stands for Visual Flight Rules. IFR stands for Instrument Flight Rules. There's a difference between VFR on the ground and VFR in flight. On the ground, VFR is a 1,000 foot AGL or higher ceiling, that's the bottom of the clouds that's broken or overcast, and at least 3 miles of visibility. So greater than a 1,000 foot ceiling and greater than 3 statute miles of visibility, and that's considered VFR. IFR, however, is less than 1,000 feet and less than 3 miles of visibility. And on the chart on the right hand side, you'll see VFR, marginal VFR, IFR, and low IFR. And basically, marginal and low are just subsections of VFR and IFR, but anything above 1,000 and 3 miles is considered VFR. So that's when you're on the ground, when you're standing at the airport, looking at the cloud coverage, that's what's considered VFR. In flight, however, to determine whether or not you are VFR, you actually have to look at that part 91-155. This table is an absolute must that you have to memorize and I think I have just a way to help you memorize it a little bit better. And we're gonna call it the triangle. Oh, no, wait. The awesome, awesome triangle, triangle of, of weather, weather minimums. minimums. I've taught this method a whole bunch of times and if you can draw this out, you basically know all your weather minimums. So grab a pen, pencil, paper, whatever you write with and draw this out as we go. It will definitely help you out, trust me. Our magic triangle depicts airspace in a kind of a 3D way. Basically, the bottom of the triangle is the surface, and then the first line is 1200 feet AGL, next line is 10,000 feet MSL, and the very top of the triangle is 18,000 feet MSL. On the bottom right, we have class golf airspace, and in order for you to be VFR in class golf airspace below 1200 feet AGL, you have to have at least one statute mile of visibility, and you have to be clear of clouds. Our next section above that is Class Golf Airspace. It's starting at 1200 feet AGL and up to 10,000 feet MSL. And in that area, you need at least one statute mile visibility, just like the Class Golf below. You also have to be at least 1000 feet above, 500 feet below, and 2000 feet away horizontally from clouds. The middle triangle has a few airspaces. We have Class Bravo, Charlie, Delta, and Echo in the middle there. And in order for you to be VFR in those airspaces, you need to have at least 3 statute miles of visibility. You have to be 1,000 feet above, 500 feet below, and 2,000 feet horizontally away from clouds. Class Bravo airspace is special because you have to be clear of clouds. So in Class Bravo, you need 3 miles of visibility and you have to stay out of the clouds. Since this is the most common airspace visibility requirement, some people remember it as 3 152s. You know, 152 is a Cessna and there's three of them. Three miles, 1,000 above, 500 below, 2,000 feet horizontally. So maybe that'll help you out a little bit. The bottom left we have Class Golf at night. Class Golf at night has different visibilities than Class Golf in the daytime. And it just so happens to be exactly the same as what's in the middle triangle. So anytime you're in Class Golf at night below 10,000 feet MSL, you'll need three miles of visibility. You have to be 1,000 feet above, 500 feet below, and 2,000 feet horizontally away from clouds. Now our last triangle is between 10,000 feet MSL and 18,000 feet MSL. And this applies to class Golf and Echo. If you're up above 10,000 feet MSL, you need at least 5 statute miles of visibility. You need to be 1,000 feet above the clouds, 1,000 feet below the clouds, and you need a one statute mile horizontal clearance from clouds in order for you to be VFR. Above 18,000 feet MSL we have Class Alpha airspace as you might have guessed. No matter what the conditions are in Class Alpha airspace, you're only allowed to operate by IFR flight rules, so there is no triangle up there. If you can remember this triangle, you're going to be set for about 90% of what we have to talk about today, so get this written down 
remember it, practice it a couple times. You might hear VFR weather minimums in flight referred to as clouds and visibility clearances or basic VFR. It all means the same thing. How far do you have to be away from clouds and how much visibility do you need in order for you to be VFR when you're flying. So how can we apply this in real life? Let's look at a couple chart examples. First of all, we'll look at Kearney County Airport. From the chart, you should be able to tell that it's a class golf airspace from the surface up to 1200 feet and then it's a class echo above 1200 feet AGL. Let's say the current weather report is 3 statute miles visibility and overcast at 1200 feet AGL. If you were to go out and practice takeoffs and landings in the traffic pattern at 1000 feet AGL, that means that you'd be in class golf airspace at 1000 feet AGL and you'd need one statute mile visibility and you'd have to stay clear of clouds. The clouds are at 1200 feet, your pattern's at 1000 feet, you can stay clear of clouds and you have at least one mile visibility. Now this is during the daytime. If you remember, golf at night is a little bit different. So if we take the same scenario, three miles visibility, 1200 feet overcast, and we go at night time to do takeoffs and landings in the traffic pattern, you'll need three miles of visibility, which is what we have. You'd also need to be a thousand feet above the clouds, 500 below and 2000 horizontally away from clouds. If you're in the traffic pattern at 1000 feet AGL, and the clouds are at 1200 feet AGL. You're not 500 feet below the clouds now, are you? So you would not be legal to fly in the traffic pattern at night at 1000 feet AGL. Hopefully by this point some of this airspace weather stuff is starting to kind of combine and make sense in your head. I know there's a lot and it's kind of confusing, but you got this. We're getting there. Let's go look at Syracuse Hamilton Airport just to the west of where we were looking. It's a class golf airspace, surface to 700 feet AGL, and then class echo 700 feet on up. If you're doing traffic pattern work, whether it's day or night, you would be in class echo airspace because traffic pattern's at 1000, class echo starts at 700 in that area, so you would be in the middle triangle, you'd be in class echo airspace, which means you need 3 miles of visibility, 1000 above 500 below 2000 horizontal. In order for you to be able to do the traffic pattern at 1000 feet and be legal, You'd need the clouds to be at least 1500 feet AGL or more, that way you can stay 500 feet below them and you'd have the visibility of 3 miles. And just a little pro tip, just because it's legal doesn't mean it's necessarily safe. If we head back to Kearney County Airport, for you to be able to fly around that area in Class G airspace to 1200 feet, you just need one statute mile of visibility and you have to stay clear of clouds. Now that's an unpopulated area kind of to the north and slightly to the south of the airport. So technically speaking, I suppose you could be at 200 feet AGL and as long as you have the one mile visibility, you would be legal to fly. But at 200 feet AGL, you would probably run into those towers up to the north if you weren't paying attention. And part of being a pilot is using good judgment, not just going by what's legal and what isn't. Here's another great example that you might have a hard time finding on the chart. This is Buckhorn. It's a private airport pretty close to Aspen, Colorado. And the chart is a little differently colored. I know there's mountains and hills and things like that, and so they have to change the shading a little bit. Buckhorn is at 8,980 feet elevation. And so it makes things a little bit interesting. You can tell that it's a class golf airspace from the surface up to 1,200 feet AGL. And then above that, it's class echo airspace. So in the traffic pattern at 1,000 feet, you would need one mile of visibility. And you'd also have to stay clear of clouds. And once again, this is golf during the daytime. If you were in the traffic pattern at night, you would need three miles of visibility. You'd have to be 1,000 feet above, 500 below, and 2,000 feet horizontally away from clouds. Now let's say the elevation of this airport was 9,500 feet. In the traffic pattern, you would still be in class golf airspace because it does go up to 1,200 feet AGL. So even though it would be over 10,000 feet elevation, you'd still be in class golf airspace because it goes to 1,200 feet AGL. Now if you were above 1,200 feet AGL, you would be in class echo airspace above 10,000 feet MSL, which would make it 5 miles of visibility, 1,000 above, 1,000 below, and you'd need one statute mile horizontal clearance from clouds. There's a little special rule with class golf airspace just because golf decided to be so special and that's at night. If you are in a traffic pattern at night within one half mile of the runway, your visibility can be one mile and you can stay clear of clouds. 
So you can practice your takeoffs and landings at a Gulf airport at night with one mile visibility and clear of clouds. The last thing we have to talk about is special VFR. And this lets you get in and out of controlled airspaces when the weather is below VFR minimums. There are a couple of requirements in order for you to use special VFR. First of all, it has to be at least a one statute mile visibility. You also have to remain clear of clouds. You need an air traffic control clearance and it has to be during the daytime. If you need special VFR at night, you have to be an instrument rated pilot with an instrument rated airplane. I wouldn't recommend getting special VFR unless you've had a pilot's license for a while and you know the area really well, but special VFR does exist if you do need to get in or get out of an airport when the weather's not so favorable. And that's all folks, that's airspace weather for you. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comment section below. And as always, have fun, fly safe, and always keep learning. See you next time.